It is good to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. God is love, and his love was disclosed to us in this, that he sent his only Son into the world to bring us life. Let's worship God as we sing the hymn number 24, Come, now is the time for worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Let us pray. Lord God, almighty creator of the world and father of each one of us, we praise you, we rejoice in the knowledge of your goodness and your power and your love. We give thanks that the King of Kings knows every one of his subjects. The Lord of Lords loves every one of his people. The judge of all the earth extends forgiveness even to the most wretched of sinners. Such love as yours is far beyond our understanding but we recognise in it the fulfilment of our deepest hopes and longings. We praise you for the gift of worship, the link between eternity and our time. Lord, we come and gladly we unite our offering of praise with the worship of the whole creation in this world and in the world to come. Holy, holy, holy is our God, sovereign Lord of all, who was and is and is to be, the one true living God forever and ever. Amen. Let us in a moment of quiet call to mind our sins and shortcomings. Heavenly Father, as we seek your forgiveness and strength, you have not kept your glory and love hidden from us. 
in Christ we've been shown the way to live but we are slow to follow it Father we acknowledge that we fall short so many times of our own low standards never mind yours we have mistaken priorities ready excuses and a disturbing lack of love we're impatient with people closest to us indifferent to those who are conveniently a long way away Lord, as we don't live up to our ideals, we fall short of your truth. As we are aware of many ways in which we've turned our back on you both by doing wrong and by leaving good undone, you are aware of many more. And we in our hardness have not even recognised but we thank you that you are so ready to forgive as we are to ask to be forgiven bring us the new peace and wholeness that your love and forgiveness brings into our lives for the sake of jesus christ who died and lives again for us forgive us all that is past Here are words that you may trust, words that merit full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear then the word of grace. Words of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. Come, follow me. And remember, I am with you always to the close of the age. Let us thank God for all his mercies. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to sing. The hymn is 443. Come let us sing of a wonderful love, tender and true.
first reading is from the letter to John, verses uh, verses 7 to 12, chapter 4. God is love. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only Son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is what God love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, if this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in union with us and his love is made perfect in us. This is the word of the Lord. This is from Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. The great commandment. A teacher of the law was there when he heard a discussion. He saw that Jesus had given the Sadducees a good answer. So when he came to him with a question, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus replied, the most important one is this, listen. Sorry. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is your only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second most important commandment is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no other commandment more important than these two. The teacher of the law said to Jesus, well done. It's true as you say, the only Lord is God and that there is no other God but he. And the man must love God with all his heart and with all his mind and with all his strength, and he must love his neighbor as he loves himself. It is more important to obey these two commandments than to offer animals or other sacrifices to God. Jesus noticed how wise his answer was. And so he told him, you are far from the, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After this, nobody asked any more questions. Thanks be to the word of the Lord. Thank you for those two readings. We sing. The hymn is 409. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live.
I'm going to read a few more verses from 1 John chapter 4. So continuing from where we were. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From this letter of John, the phrase that pops out time and again, and the one that fills many of us with hope, is in verse 16. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. I'm going to knock something off here in a moment. I can feel it coming. <clears throat> there is a cartoon, or was a cartoon, I don't know if it still exists, and uh, it, presumably in one of the daily papers, I think, but it just says, it used to say, love is, and there was a wee picture, and then something different at the bottom, you know, love is a warm puppy, uh, tea for two, add your own, as it were. Show me age now. The The Beatles sang, all you need is love. I think somebody once sang, love me, love my dog. During the pandemic, many folks acquired a puppy or some other pet. I mean, once upon a time, unfortunately, they often gave a puppy for a Christmas present. What, what, a, what a time. In the middle of winter to get and loving your puppy is not just about a nice feeling and a cuddle you know um, when it's cold outside it's not a sentimental thing although sentiment may come into it loving your puppy means feeding it watering it not giving them things that poison them like chocolate Training them. You have to clean up after them at first, of course. Um, but training them, especially not to do that in the house. It's a lifetime's commitment with a lifetime of rewards. <coughs> Somebody once said that the fact that God loves us, God loves us, is, if you like, a lifetime guarantee 
for all of our life, but for the eternity that belongs to God. <coughs> Love is a, a single word. Now, you'll have heard lots of preachers over the years tell you, you know, the, in the Greek that the New Testament is written in, there's more than one word for love, and we just use the word love to sort of uh, cover the lot. Well, here it comes again. Filio is the sort of love to be a friend. It's tender, affection. Storge, the affection of parents, children to cherish them. And agape, which is used as, as God's love, it is a constant love, a practical love, love in its highest and noblest forms. It says something so, so precious in the object of its love. It's disinterested, not uninterested, disinterested. The only thing it cares about is the object of its love and seeks only the good of others. The kind of love that God shows to us. Love in creation and preservation of this universe. Love supremely shown in Jesus Christ in his life, death and resurrection. What is our message to one another? God loves you. And love is of God. It comes from God. It is at the heart of God. And this passage from 1 John emphasises that. Love begins with God. It is the central truth of Christian faith. For God is love. And it's a two-way relationship. When Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment, you know, in the passage that we've got, what is the first commandment? He offers the young man two for the price of one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. Now Jesus may not have been the first rabbi and teacher to bring those together. And it is a question that not only Jesus was asked, but as far as we know, other rabbis was asked. What is it is the basis of the commandments? Not which ones can we get rid of to concentrate, but what sums it up? Paul later on in his writings will say, love is the fulfilling of the law. And the scribe said, answer, that's worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. It is only by knowing the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ that we understand what love is. But it's only by loving that we learn to know God. Love, as I say, comes from God and love leads to God. You know the old Sunday school story where that um, the, the, they're always Sunday school stories, aren't they? Anyway, the, the, the teaching about and the child asked the Sunday school teacher, where can I find God? And she says to him, where you find love, there you will find God. Love's the controlling element. Surprise, surprise sometimes in the Christian faith, although perhaps when you were growing up, it wasn't always felt that way. When you sat, I don't know about you, you sat in the back pew and you'd get a glare from somebody and shh, because of course you were disturbing everybody, talking to each other. I remember we had a, 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 a deaconess Sister Riley, mad as a box of frogs. She left us and she became a missionary. And uh, she came back and uh, on a furlough and, and she was speaking at our chapel and she was talking about, she was in Guyana, 
might have been British Guiana in those days, but Guyana. And she said they were losing young people from the church. And these young boys weren't coming anymore. So she went to find out. And church service times was the same time as the cricket practice. So she went back to the stewards and said, can we move the time of the church service? And so they did. And the young men went to both. <coughs> and I always remember the older folks, sorry about this now that I'm old, in our chapels, oh, that's great, isn't it? We played a football match, the youth club, one Sunday afternoon. We'd be in the church and some would be there at night. Boy, did we get it in the neck. It's not what you do. We couldn't see what we'd done wrong. Love is the controlling element in our Christian faith. And people have, over the years, put other things in its place, above it, and it leads to a distortion of who we are and what we are. We can make right behaviour, you know, upstanding morality, the governing factor, and it leads to self-righteousness and being judgmental. We can say what you believe. You've got to believe the right things. And it leads to harshness and exclusion of others. Many years, somebody, um, Butterfield, Professor Butterfield, wrote a book. I can't remember much about the book except this one phrase. And he said, Hold to Christ and for the rest be uncommitted. What you believe and be morally um, good, if you want, are good and important things. But love as seen in Jesus Christ must control everything that we are. Paul in 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us of this. It's worth going home and reading it again. The one you know that ends, there are three things that last forever. The greatest of these is love. And we always miss out the next line which belongs to it in chapter 14. Therefore, make love your aim. As I said, Paul writes, love is the fulfilling of the law. When we read the stories about Jesus in the Gospels and in the Acts of the Apostles, we're told the people heard him gladly. He went about doing good. And the goodness of Jesus was attractive to those who were beaten down, dismissed, told they didn't count. Love is not an optional extra for us. Love is our response to God's love for us. And in 1 John, the writer says, this came first. This is what love really is. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. Paul writes, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He loved us first, and it's his love that melts the hardness of our hearts. I have a book, and it's a book of cartoons, and it's just called My God. And one of the, 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 the there's a pen drawing of a little fellow, and the one that comes to mind this morning is, He's shaking his fist and said, love one another or I'll come down there and thump you. <laughs> and so often that is our response, if you like. It is not how God truly is. Jesus said, 
Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Puts a different perspective on what love is about. Some of you may have heard years ago me on this once before. There was a couplet I read in the Methodist recorder a long time ago, and it just said this To love the world to me's no chore. My big trouble's the man next door. <laughs> like looking after this puppy, this dog, if you have one, love is practical. There's a story told about an undertaker who only ever went to church and when his professional duties said he should go. And the congregation, it was a young, um, young woman who had died, uh, no, a young man who had died and left a young widow. And everybody was saying how sorry they were and, and how terrible it was and what could they do. And this undertaker, rough and ready, said, he went to the front and he said, shows you how old this story is, I'm sorry, five pounds. How much are you sorry? Love is practical. And John says it is not fear. And a lot of religion, Christianity included, in the past has been dominated by fear. And fear is used to control people, manipulate people. Love does not want to control and it doesn't want to manipulate. And it doesn't want everybody to do things my way. The relationship we should have with God in Christ has a different quality and character from anything we have known before. In human terms, I don't fear those I love. I do fear letting them down. God grants us his spirit that we may not let him down too often. We know we are accepted as we are. We have been taught that. Believe it. We know that we may become different. And we don't have to prove ourselves to God in case we lose his good opinion of us. He already knows the truth about us and it didn't put him off. Desmond Tutu said, we may be surprised at the people we find in heaven. God has a soft spot for sinners. His standards are quite low. He loves everything that he's made. And as Psalm 118 puts it, this is the Lord's doing, it is marvellous in our eyes. And God loves you and me, has called you and me, chosen you and me now that's amazing grace called to receive the love and to share it called to be part of his people called to be if you like an image of God because whether we like it or not, we are, what we do and what we say, if you like, we're a visual aid for God. And it's no good saying to somebody, don't, I'm not at my best today, don't look at me, go and look at somebody else. People will know or not know something of God because of us. Jesus says to you and me, as he says to everybody, as <coughs> his disciples, follow me. Love is of God. It's the controlling element in who we are. 
and what we believe. It's not an optional extra. Love, not fear, should fill our lives. And God has chosen and called you and me. Why? Because he loves us. Now that's amazing grace. To another old story. Apologise if you've heard it before. Again, a Sunday school class, you know, they're all drawn pictures and uh, of whatever story was being told. And the teacher's going round and says, little girl, and she's drawn this picture. And she says, what, what are you drawing a picture of? She says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the Sunday school teacher gently says, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the little girl said, they will when I'm finished. <laughs> Will people know what God looks like when we're finished? Amen. Oops. I think the offerings brought... Yes. Looking for help at the back. Thank you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you have loved all that you have made. Continue to love us and care for everyone. We bring to you today this offering to represent all we are and all we have given and used in your service. Grant us the strength of your spirit we may live and work to your praise and glory. We ask it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We come to our prayers for the world, for other people and for ourselves. And as we pray, when I say the words, Lord, hear us, would you join with me in saying, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, hear us. Lord, us. In faith, let us pray to God our Father, in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. God of love, we pray for the life of your church throughout the world. Places of calm and places of war. Places where people fear for their life because they name the name of Jesus. Lord, may every congregation be a community of love and every Christian a witness to your grace. Renew all who worship in this place that we may be a living fellowship in your spirit and serve our neighbours. Lord, hear us. God of mercy, we pray for the life of your world a world torn apart by violence war fear and hatred for those who exercise power taken or given
we pray for places in the Middle East, Afghanistan, Russia and Ukraine, the Horn of Africa. for our own country and communities. Show us how to live as members of one human family, to reject the ways of war, to bear each other's burdens, and to work together for justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of compassion, we pray for those who are ill or anxious at home or in hospital. Known to us, held dear perhaps to us. The names and faces we bring before you now. And we pray for those whose lives are filled with fear despair draw near with your saving love bring healing bring hope Lord hear us Lord graciously hear us God, creator and sustainer, we pray for those parts of the world and people who suffer because we do not care, who suffer from disasters natural and human made, for those who are suffering from flooding or fires and heat and drought. Granted as we pray these prayers along with others we may be part of the answer to our prayers. Lord hear us. Lord graciously hear us. God of glory we rejoice in the communion of saints. We remember all who have faithfully lived and all who have shared love with us. Help us to follow the example of your saints in light. Bring us with them into the fullness of your eternal joy, where we will know love in all its fullness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you the good things that pass all our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that loving you above all things, we may pour out that love to one another and obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing in the hymn is 500 
and 57, let him to whom we now belong, his sovereign right assent. Just bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. God has accepted your offering in Christ. Go now to offer yourselves as God's people to the world he loves. And the blessing of God, 